Welcome back to Low Buck Builds. In this video, we're going to start getting this truck bed put back together. In the last video, we did a plug and a coil. We got running grates. Uh, so far, we spent $2,102 on this truck and we have $398 left in our budget. So let's get to it. We're about to hit 50,000 views and to celebrate, I want to get back to my subscribers. So through the month of December, I'll be picking one comment from the videos to receive a toolbox sticker pack, which will include a certified YouTube mechanic sticker and two low buck build stickers. So to enter, just throw a comment on any video, make sure you're subscribed. So as I always say, if you like the video, if you hate the video, if you got some advice or you just want to say hi, throw a comment below and you'll be entered to win the stickers. Anytime you're welding, always make sure to disconnect the battery cable. Some people do negative, some people do positive, doesn't matter. So our first step is we're gonna, we're gonna put some angle iron across here to add some, to add some support for this. We're gonna do the same thing from this side. We're basically gonna use some eighth inch angle I have, and then we'll work our way back. We need to rebuild these boxes also to add structure and so we can put our tailgate back on. We're gonna go through this maybe. So, yep, and once we get all that done, we'll start working our way back there with patches. I'm gonna be using 16 gauge sheet metal so let's get to it. So our first step is we're gonna grind this down and get these support pieces done up front, or I should say in the back, I guess. So our first step is we're gonna grind this down and get some support pieces here in the back. Once we get this all rebuilt, then we'll work our way patching the rest of the bed with 16 gauge. So let's get to it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start grinding on this. I went ahead and covered my back window because it's actually in really good shape and I don't want to tear it up with sparks, so. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and measure for the angle iron I'm gonna put in. I already cleared off with the grinder this area right here. So we're gonna go ahead and measure across and see how big of a piece we want. Yeah, it looks like four inches, which makes sense. Yep, four inches both sides, so we're going to get some angle iron and go ahead and cut out those four inch pieces. And I'll show you what we'll do next. Alright, we'll go ahead and get this cut. Go ahead and mark four inches. We're going to go on for... So if you have a chop saw, it'd be a lot better for this. I don't, so I have to use a death wheel, so it's not gonna be exactly straight, but it'll do the job. So we're gonna go ahead and mark up where we wanna make sure we're cut. So now that we got our piece, we're gonna throw it on here and make sure that we have the paint cleared where we need it. And then I'm going to mark some spots where I want my holes to be. So we're going to do rosette welds on this. And then we'll probably do some welds around the ends. Two rows on the top. So we're going to weld this in and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We get some holes drilled in this. So these are drill bits I'm going to be using, quarter inch and eighth inch. The link's in the description. I got all these off Amazon. This is what I use. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take my punch. Center punch here. Eighth inch first. Eighth 
For the record, these are cobalt drill bits too, not the brand, but the type. So they are really strong, they last pretty long. Go ahead and pilot all these with eighth inch bit. I just use a scrap plywood, so that way if I make cut marks and stuff in it, it's not that big of a deal. As you can see, it's done lots of projects. Lots of different colors and holes and cuts in it. Now we'll go ahead and switch to our eighth or our quarter inch bit and I'll be right back. All right, we got our bit loaded up, our eighth inch. We're gonna go ahead and just make these a little bigger. And just like that, this is what we came up with. Now I'm going to show you the next step, and but first I'm going to go ahead and do the other piece. So I lied. Actually, before I do the next piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, some rust converter on this, and then I'll do uh, some weld through primer on this, get it all prepped up for uh, welding this in. We'll also go ahead and put weld through primer on this. I'll clean it off with some rubbing alcohol and a rag, both of them. And we'll do well through primer. So basically that way everything will dry while we're working on the other piece. We can, we're always doing something. We can get this done faster. All right, so these are the chemicals we're gonna be using. There's links in description for them. But on this one, we're gonna be doing all spray through, or we're gonna be doing all weld through primer, just because we're gonna be welding all over this. But in a lot of places we're gonna do the heavy metal and then just grind out and use the weld through where we need to. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do some uh, Loctite rust converter neutralizer, whatever you want to call it. Just spray the crap out of it with that. The heavy rust primer has the same thing in it, but like I said, we're gonna do weld through on this, so I'd rather use this. So we'll let that dry and then we'll coat it with uh, weld through primer, the whole thing. Actually, first we'll mark where our holes are. We'll grind those a little bit just to take that stuff off. And then we'll uh, put the weld through primer on. So here's what I use to wipe down before I paint. It's uh, for paint prep. It's Denature alcohol. It does a really good job cleaning any kind of oils or anything like that on it. You could go through and grind these holes. I usually do, but I don't know if I'm going to mess with it this time. I'm kind of in a hurry. And it's not going to hurt anything because these are going to get full of welds anyway. So yeah, just kind of get some of the oil from the... Get some of the oil off of it. Now I'll take it out and hit it with some uh, well through primer. that about 10 minutes to dry while we start cutting the other piece all right we got our second piece made 
Our other piece over there is coated and dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray this one, and then we'll grab that one, mark our holes over at the other side, and get that prepped. So we're gonna go ahead and mark these holes so we know where to grind, because we do have that chemical on that converts to rust. So we're gonna grind that a little bit, and then we'll do weld through primer through everything. I'm using black, because it'll stand out a little better than that gray one. We have a little overhang, but we can grind that or cut that off later. So I'm going to go ahead and grind where those marks are, and then we'll uh, coat that. We'll go ahead and coat that in the weld through primer as well. All right, we'll go ahead and get our rubbing alcohol rag. We'll go ahead and spray it with our weld through primer. We'll let that dry, and then we'll go ahead and Start getting ready to weld it in. All right, so I got this one tacked and ready to go. As you can see, we're not gonna be welding pretty welds because this stuff's kind of rotten. So I gotta do the best I can, put as much as I can on it. So we're gonna go ahead and get the side welded in. All right, definitely getting solider. Not the super prettiest thing in the world, but you gotta remember it's really rusty metal, so we're just trying to get a bite. We're gonna go over the top of it with fiberglass when we're all done, and now fill in some of the holes and punch through. So there's not really a guide to how to do this, so I'm kind of figuring out as I go along. I'm gonna use some of this just to kind of build some structure here in this corner to attach sheet metal to. So I think that's gonna be the next step. I'm also gonna take some cardboard and make some templates on sheet metal, what to cut out. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the truck out of here since it's getting dark, make all those templates and stuff and then weld them in tomorrow because the mosquitoes are gonna start coming in. So let me get to that and get this cleared out and get the truck out and then we'll start making some uh, templates all right so what i'm going to do is get some uh, measurements to build some plates to fill this in so after going out there we need four inches by six and a half times four we need a 15 by four we need two of those actually and i need two four and a half inch of that same angle that i just cut seven out of so we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff prepped, and then tomorrow we can just grind it down and weld it in. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this stuff. I'm going to listen to some unlicensed music, and whenever I get these four and a half cut, and I'll show you some of the sheet metal cuts. Alright, so this is a piece of 14 gauge, I believe. No, 16 gauge. This is a piece of 16 gauge I bought for the Firebird. <laughs> I'll buy some more. I will add this to the price list, even though I have it laying around, so it's not costing me anything. 
Uh, this is a 12 inch by 24 inch piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this out that we just found we need. I'm gonna do a little bit of math here, 15 times four. So I'm already using half of it. So I might do the 15 by four sheets out of some thinner 20 gauge that I have laying around. Um, I think I'm gonna use this for the structure on the sides, which are the four by six and a half that I need four of. So I think we're gonna do four and then cut out the sections. So let's get it measured up and we'll go ahead and get it cut out. Yeah, this is actually super exact. But the same material, I want it somewhat close. Oil on this makes it hard to try it on, but we got it. Probably do the old big long cut first. You know. So I found this piece, this is 20 gauge I believe, and I actually it's about perfect. <clears throat> I got 15 inches pretty much across there, and I need 15 by fours, and I got eight and three quarters that way. So I'm gonna split it, cut two strips out of it, and call it a day. So let me get it marked up, and I'll bring you guys back when I cut it. I haven't put holes in these yet because I want to see where I want to put them when I put it on the truck. I'm going to match it to structure just like we did on the other stuff. So we'll give that like a couple minutes and I'll flip it and do that and then we'll come back and I'll do a quick uh, well through primer on everything else. Alright, so we got these coated. This is the back side. So we're going to let these dry overnight and tomorrow we'll start putting them in. They're all ready to go. So I'll see you guys again in the morning. So real quick, I wanna talk about welders. This welder I've had for about two and a half years and I have not used it. So today is the first time I've used it. I actually got this from my grandfather. He had a electrical short and it burned up the board. He got a new welder through insurance and I asked him if I could get this one. And I took it up to Kalamazoo to Miller up there and they repaired it for $600. They put a new board in it, went completely through it. And it's pretty much sat there because I don't really do stuff with bigger metal. I usually use my little Harbor Freight one for like the last six years because I'm always doing body work and I don't really need a bigger welder. But now I decided it's time to start using this one. So just a little backstory on the welders. So it's the next day about noon. We're going to go ahead and get the truck back in here, get it ground down and start planning on putting all this stuff in the truck. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this all leveled out and we're going to get the roto zip and get the paint off of all this so we can weld those plates in. Same thing on this side, I want to get this flush and I'll show a little bit of that but not a lot because it's kind of boring. And then we'll get to getting these plates welded in. Alright, so we got this piece welded in and now I can use that for something to hold on to these once I get them cut to the right size. So that's kind of the strategy here. We'll weld these in and then we'll weld another one up here. 
So let me get to getting these the right size and I'll come back. Now we're gonna cut that out. Places marked where to make my holes for rosette welts, and then we'll grind over there once we set where the holes are going to be. All right, trace it out. We're gonna go ahead and cut it out. All right, test for the good. You take that little corner off and we should be good to go. So we got everything primered where we need to, ground down, hit with the weld through primer. So next we're gonna go ahead and start getting the stuff welded in.
it's tacked up. It's time to fill in what we can. And we'll get ready for fiberglass. All right, so we got these first two panels put in. On this side, I still gotta do a panel up there. And I gotta do something to fill this hole in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on that and then we'll come back and get ready to put some fiberglass on here. All right, so we got everything covered in heavy rust primer. We're gonna go ahead and let that dry. And then once it dries, I'm gonna start putting fiberglass on. This is the short strand. I was looking for long strand, but they were out. So we're gonna use short strand. And we're basically gonna fill all this in. It's gonna add structure and make it look better. So once this dries and I get it applied, I'll come right back. Okay, there's lots of ways people do this. This is how I've done it. I've never had any problem with it. I like to get a cheap paint stick to pull it out with. size amount because we got a lot to cover so you let it settle you want it to be about a quarter inch thick and then when you're ready to do it you just run one line across it and stir it up mix it up and it's good to go I'm still waiting because the primer is not quite ready yet so I'll come back when I'm ready to do the mixing all right let's do it I like to use these mixing boards they're like 20 bucks they last I don't know, me about six months or so. And it's worth it to me just to have a nice clean sheet. Sucks as this mix is blue with green, so it's kind of hard to see. But it is what it is. So this isn't really as bad as Bondo. You don't have to be as technical with it because you're going to sand most of it down anyway. Typically, when you do a car or something with it, then Bondo is going to go over the top. So it's, it's a little bit more forgiving. I'm just gonna kind of fill in the gaps here. Just trying to use this for a sealer and to fill up some of these holes we got. Then along here, this bedside is actually plastic. So I'm putting this in here to kind of glue it back together. I don't know how originally it was attached, it was glue or what from the factory. But I don't want water getting in there, so I'm going to try to seal it with fiberglass. If you're filling big holes, the bit long hair is a little better, but this will do the job. Alright, I'm going to make up, mix up a little bit. We're basically, going to be repeat this. It's going to be kind of boring to see me spread this for an hour, so I'll bring you guys back when it's done. All right, so I got all the fiberglass put on. I'm going to go ahead and push this out for the night. And tomorrow, we'll start sanding it down and see how it came out. All right, see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this part here. Um, I still need to sand this down. But in the next video, we're going to go ahead and start filling in this. We're just going to put weld strips in there and then do the same thing, put some fiberglass over the top. I also want to start putting the hinges on so we can get our tailgate back on and get our new bumper on. So look for part two probably next week and we'll go ahead and get this bed wrapped up finish this budget pickup truck project. As always, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit that like button and uh, I'll see you in the next video.
Thanks for watching.